All right, guys, it's your boy. I'm back again, blackout video. And on my video earlier today, a commenter by the name of Sword Falcon uh, posed a question, you know, for me to answer on Sunday, but I actually thought it was good enough to do an entire video on. And it was three parts to the question. Um, first part is, you know, and I'm going to skip a lot of the uh, semantics part of it or not necessarily submit this the excess dialogue and just get to the question part. The first part is uh, if if they Pelicans give him a 20 plus million dollar contract, will they start to basically cater to him? And then the second part is uh, how will his relationship with BI uh, or what will their friendship or partnership look like if he's still on the team? And the third part to the question is do I even still want him to be on the Pelicans, or do I even see him on the Pelicans? <clears throat> okay. Uh, the first two parts of the question are going to be very easy to answer. Um, actually, all of them are going to be easy to answer. They're, but the first two are definitely not going to take the longest to explain. Um, so, when it comes to them giving him a $20 million contract. Is he, is it going to change their dealings in their relationship with him? The answer is no. The reason why is because when you look at that team, you have to look at it like a big three. And they haven't played their, they haven't paid their big guy yet. And they're not going to until that rookie contract is up. So he's still got two more years, but historically, on the big three, there's two main dogs and a support player. It's very rare that the third player is not a main part in the offense. Well, let me explain what I mean by that. Let's go back to, <clears throat> say... Boston Celtics, the big three of the 2000s. You know, the main person on that team was probably Pierce and Ray Allen. KG kind of played more of a support role because he really had the most versatile tool set, the skill set, so he did a little bit of everything. But obviously, this was Paul Pierce's team to start because. Paul Pierce, uh, he was all—he was always a Boston Celtic. That was his team. Ray Allen, he was pretty good. He was mainly just there to shoot threes, but that's all he ever did, you know, and space the floor. I mean, he really can't play any other role other than shoot threes. I mean, if he couldn't shoot, he basically wouldn't have played. Uh, so KG was kind of like the third wheel in my eyes. I know a lot of people say, no, nah, it was more Ray Allen, or you might even argue Rondo. But, you know, he, KG really didn't get all that catered to in my eyes. You know, if we fast forward a little bit past him, we got Miami. Chris Bosh is the third wheel. He basically played the support piece. And he wasn't really catered to. The offense wasn't built around him. The offense was built around Wade and Braun. And we could keep on going throughout history. Um... Even going back into the 80s and whatnot, you know, the the alone exception to that would probably be the Lakers because Magic was the support piece. He's the ultimate support piece, but he was the primary option support piece because it was him, Kareem, and Worthy. You know, Kareem and Worthy were the offensive options, but Magic was the main guy. He, you know, he's a little bit different. But, you know, even historically, like, okay, look at the Warriors recently. The offense was initially built around Steph, Clay, and Draymond. Draymond is the support piece. When they got KD, Draymond kind of shifted into, like, what I would consider a lesser role player. But they took away a lot of the stuff for Clay just to benefit KD because clearly he was the better player and 
because of it, Clay's numbers kind of took a dive. They used him mainly for his defense and as a spot-up shooter. If Lonzo were to stay with the Pelicans, he's going to be in that role of a support player. They're not going to cater much of the offense and stuff around him, but they're going to understand that he's going to have to be considered a part of their core going forward as long as he's still performing. Um, the worst thing that they could do is pay him and he regresses, and that's probably what they're most scared of. Because if you think about it, they saw this movie last year. Oh, Lonzo does good, goes to the bubble, and now, you know, there's reasons for that. Uh, like he said, he really didn't get the chance to work out or practice or play during the pandemic and all that other stuff, uh, which is understandable. But he still was really bad in the bubble for, you know, everything that was going on. Um, so the whole point of me saying all this is to say Lonzo is still going to be who he is right now. In fact, they have more incentive to treat him this way because, look, he's scoring more points for them. He's being productive offensively. So even without the way they look at it is even without his passing and rebounds, because they got other players to do that. He's going to contribute to the team in other ways. He's going to be that 3 and D guy who can space the floor. And if they need to run, he can push the ball up the floor and command the offense as necessary. He is the third guy on this team. I don't think anybody at this point looks at the Pels and say, okay, the Pels go in order Zion and B.I. and then next Bledsoe. I don't think anybody goes those guys and then Kira or not unless you certain media people so really it's like when you look at this team it's those three it has always been those three the question was was Lonzo going to actually come along with them for the ride and this season it looks like he's finally ascended and coming along for the ride now to your second question. Look, B.I. and Zoe are really good friends, allegedly. And I'm using allegedly because I really don't know their relationship. And I made a video where I said I'm not necessarily sure what their relationship is like. Especially when they had all year to defend him. And really, they've only just started recently having his back, like, outwardly. You know what I'm saying? But they kind of don't have a choice because he's been in the media because of how good he's been playing. Um, I think, you know, I truly I think B.I. actually rides for Zoe. I think their relationship would still be good. And honestly, you know, I'm going to teeter into the last part of the question. I want Lonzo, or I wanted Lonzo and Josh Hart and B.I. to stay together for basically the rest of their careers if possible. Um, I would have liked them if had Kuzma for the ride too because I actually, to be honest, when they were with the Lakers, I actually liked that four, that four core. Um, but I kind of want them to stay together. Uh, as that pertains to B.I.'s relationship, look... Of everybody on the Pels roster, B.I. has had the most in-game experience starting with Lonzo. You got to remember, B.I. was on that team with D'Angelo Russell and Nick Young and them when they had that whole incident that happened and, you know, they blew that up. And so Lonzo showed up and Lonzo immediately was the starter next to B.I. And if you remember... I don't know how long have you guys been following B.I. and Zoe on the Lakers, but B.I. and the rest were like, yo, we can't wait to play with this guy. Before he even touched the it's like they were really excited when they drafted Lonzo. It's like, oh, we got Lonzo? Oh, yeah, I can't wait to play with him. Oh, we finna run. We finna, you know, that was how they felt. And so I think there's a unique connection. Again, going back to the Houston game the other night, they have a synergy together. It's there. Um, especially when you include Josh Hart, which is why I've always talked about the uh, Lakers trio. Um, I'll get into that maybe a little bit later in this video. Or I might make another video about the Lakers trio. But 
their relationship has, has been seemingly tight. Even on Ball and the Family, when he found out he was traded, he had B.I. on the phone. You know, so I think having Lonzo bring some comfort to B.I., I think he'll be happy for him. I think he wants him. I think he wants to be successful with Zoe and not without him. Um, that's my perception of it. I could be wrong, but you never know how these relationships go in the league. You know, sometimes things seem a certain way. Hell, look at Kyrie and LeBron. You know, things seem worse or actually seem worse -er now after they've been away compared to when they were together. Um, so I think it will benefit B.I. if Lonzo stayed. I think he'd be happy. I think he'd want to have his point guard that he's played. You know, you've been in battle with this guy your whole career, basically, um, except your rookie year. You kind of want to, you got a rapport. I think it's better for him if, if it's like, okay, I still got my guy. Like, that's my guy. That's my point guard. You know, that's that's my boy. So, I think that's how their relationship um, will be going forward if he were to resign. And it will also motivate B.I., I think, to have an even better season going forward knowing he's got his guy right there next to him. Um, now, this is the fun part. <laughs> Do I actually want... Lonzo to stay in New Orleans. I gotta tell you, man. I gotta tell you. I like everybody else look forward to when Lonzo got traded uh, to the Pelicans. I was already clamoring about how well that backcourt of him and Drew are gonna be defensively. And I was arguing with people. I said they, they might be better than Kawhi and Pat Beverly in the backcourt. Or Paul George and Pat Bev in a backcourt, depending on how you, uh, what position you play, Paul George and Kawhi. Um, let me say this. I want, like I said earlier, I want the Lakers trio to stay together and win. I really do. Um, that doesn't necessarily have to be on the Pelicans, but I would really love if Josh Hart. Lonzo and B.I. stayed together. From just the basketball aspect of it, yes, I would love for them to stay in New Orleans. Absolutely would. First of all, that's my state. I truly believe with those three in Zion, and if you get the right big and bench, I think they could actually compete for a championship. Um, side note into the compete for the championship thing, that's not going to happen for a couple years. Look, we're in a weird place in the league right now where we got superstars, old superstars who are still really good, and they're gatekeeping. What I mean by gatekeeping? The path to a title is going to go through Kawhi, KD, LeBron, and Steph. Period. Until those guys start falling off, which it don't look like it's going to be anytime soon, nobody else is winning a title. Lonzo and B.I. are 23. <clears throat> Steph and the rest are like 31, 32. Kawhi's 27, 28. Let's assume in four years LeBron is 40 and he's retired. You got KD and Steph at 36, which is about the same age. Yeah, around the same age now that LeBron is. Kawhi would then be like 32 years old. Lonzo and everybody would be 23. Zion would be 25. Luca would be like 25. You know, John Morant, 20, you know, 25. You're 24, somewhere in that area. You know, Melo would be 23. You see what I'm saying? Like, you got Embiid, who would be 30. Um, Giannis, who would be 30. AD, who would be 31. You see what I'm saying? This... It's, it's going to be hard to win a, a chip. You're not going to have many years to have a crack at it. 
You see what I'm saying? They're going to gatekeep for a long time. For a long, long time. It's going to be hard to get a ring with these guys here. It's not like LeBron, when he came into the league, he came in at 18, he spent his first seven years in Cleveland before he decided to go on and go to Miami and form his big three and win. You know, he was like 25 years old, 26 years old. These guys really aren't going to get a crack at this until maybe four years, five years from now. By then, they're 28, 29, 27, somewhere up in there. Of course, Jordan didn't start winning until he was like 30. But again, you know, you're starting to lose your prime. And you don't get too many cracks at it. Dwight Howard only got two cracks at it. Once in Orlando, and everything had to go right. And then again, this last year when he was with LeBron. You don't have too many tries at it. So, the margin for error for this group is going to be very slim for a while. You know, until, like, they just get some kind of younger super team to come together and they just wipe the floor with the old guys. But I don't see that happening. Having said that, back to the point, back to the question. I honestly am ready for Lonzo to leave. And it has nothing to do with basketball. I am ready for him to leave so I can leave the toxic-ass Pelicans fan base with it. Um, outside of that, and kind of the front office and their fuckery, I would love for them to stay and bring a title to Louisiana and to the Pelicans. Look, Drew Brees is probably gone after this year, well, this offseason. Uh, I doubt he comes back next year, but if he does, you know, they're not going to win in my estimation. I didn't even watch the Saints play this year, and I'm a Saints fan. I already knew what the result was going to be. They're going to have to rebuild. And as much as I trust Jameis Winston, I don't, I'm not sure what they're going to do because Sean Payton seems like he's leaning toward uh, – uh, I can't think of the guy's name. Taysom Hill. So it's like, okay, they're not going to be the – who that said they're going to beat the Saints if they've been for like the last almost two decades? What will New Orleans have? So I want them to stay in New Orleans, in Louisiana, to give Louisiana something to cheer for athletically. You know, we've always had LSU, but honestly, who gives a damn about LSU? You know, I don't even watch college. But I know a lot of people hate LSU. More people hate LSU than a lot of people well, LSU, you know. But I would I would rather for basketball reasons, I would rather for them to be, you know, New Orleans' team. Like for them to put the franchise on their back. Even if they never actually win a chip, I want them to go down and be the greatest players for that franchise ever in history. You know, but again, personally for me, I want Lonzo out of here because I think, let me not say I think, I know for a fact I don't want to be a part of this media bullshit. I'm tired of it. I'm, I'm sick and tired of this place. I'm sick and tired of Pell's Media. I'm sorry. I can't put it any other way. I, I'm ready to go. Like, I, like I've always said, wherever he at, that's where I'm at. You know, I will still be a Mass fan, of course. You know, I'm going to still cheer for my Luka and my KP and our squad. But where I'm a Lonzo fan. That's who I hitch my wagon to. So wherever he go to, I'm following him. He go to Antarctica for all I care. I'm going to be in Antarctica rooting for him. Not actually. I'm going to be sitting here in my apartment, you know, with the heat rooting for him. But... I watched a couple games and some highlights or something, you know what I'm saying? But do I actually want him? No. No, 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 no. I don't want him here. Um, part of me is torn with Lonzo in this regard. Um, 
ultimately having to accept that he's not going to be like that alpha super dog rah 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 guy who's gonna drop 27 8 and 8 at night is fine i never comped him to be that but there was always that potential um i never thought he was going to come into the league and just start killing people and scoring a bunch of buckets this is not who he is that's not the kind of style of player he is his career average is not the kind of career average that, and I'm not going to answer this question because I know somebody asked it and I'm going to save it for Sunday. But his career average is not in line with modern day point guards or the expectation. You know, he's not the Isaiah Thomas mode of point guards or the Pistol Pete's. So for me, part of me wants him to also leave so he can have a better individual success. But at the same time, knowing what kind of player he is, you kind of need a team or already be building a team that has the requisite parts. Pretty much what Lonzo was going to need is two, like either a really good center, like a God level center, and or a great wing or two great wings. You know, if it were up to me, I would try to package Lonzo to go get Ben Simmons and swap Ben Simmons with uh, Zoe and let, be, and let Ben play center or point guard here in New Orleans. And I think if you have Lonzo with Doc Rivers in Philly, I think Philly becomes a much more threatening team to win a chip. That would be something I would make a deal to do or maybe possibly get him in Orlando like I've been campaigning for, or hell, even the Bulls. I kind of don't care. I just want to get him out of you know New Orleans. So personally... I want him to stay and win a chip and become legends in New Orleans with, you know, the Lakers trio as a whole. But at the same time, outside of that, I don't want to deal with Pell's, Pell's media, Pell's Twitter. So if I had to, like, pitch my wagon or something or pin it down, I want to go, I want him out of New Orleans. You know, and I hate to say that, but, you know, just the fact that I even have to block you know, certain media guys here is, is telling enough. I've been on Twitter long enough. I've been around, you know, other places and their media guys. They're nowhere near what this is. You know, there's some bad apples in every bunch, but this shit is just terrible. This shit reminds me of high school. Um, but anyway, that's my take on this topic. Like I said, I thought it was good enough to have a longer video. Actually, shit, it is. I'm about to hit 23 minutes, you know, looking at this. Um, I didn't think it was going to be this long. But, uh, so, you know, that question was definitely worth the video in itself. I hope I answered it, you know. And again, you guys, please go on the other video if you have questions, and I'll address them. Who knows? If I see another question like this, I may make another video. But, um, uh, in the meantime, y'all have a good one. It's your boy. Peace.